The New Testament reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, reading from verses 26 to 31. Brothers, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards, and not many were influential. Not many of, were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are, so that no one may, may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God, that is, our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. Thanks be to God for his word. Let's pray. Father God, we pray that you would take these words and use this time to speak into each of our hearts and our minds, because you are the living God and you want to change things. You want to change us. You want your kingdom established here upon the earth. Lord, please use us to do that. Use this time, Lord, we pray. For that purpose. Amen. For my introduction this morning, I have taken some words from a book entitled Maybe. The book is written by a man called Kobe Yamada. Maybe a new author to you, but Kobe's written a number of small books in which he explores different aspects of Christian faith and life. And he's an author that aims his work largely at children. But having read maybe a few days ago, I thought actually that speaks to children of all ages. And these words that I've used have been used with the full permission of the publishing house compendium. Have you ever wondered why you are here? You are the only you there ever has been or ever will be. You have so much to offer. Wherever you go, Take your hopes, pack your dreams, and never forget, it is on journeys that discoveries are made. Maybe you will help others to see the beauty in each new day. As you speak the right word at the right time. Do everything with love. Follow your heart and see where it leads you. Maybe you're here to shine a light into places that have been dark for far too long. Maybe you'll speak up for those who cannot speak up for themselves. Maybe you're here to help others as only you can. There will be struggles, there will be fears, and it won't always be easy. At times it will feel really hard, and you might make a mess of things. 
You may fall down. You may fail. But you will also get back up and you will rise a little stronger and a little wiser each time. There really is more inside you than you know. And this world needs your gifts, your talents, your big ideas. Maybe you have no idea just how much you matter. But maybe, just maybe, the world has been waiting for someone just like you. One thing is for sure, you are here. And because you are here, anything is possible when you put your hand into the hand of God. These words are appropriate because they underline what I believe God wants to say to us this morning, which is that God's not finished with you. There is still huge untapped potential in each of us. God is not finished with any of us. We are all a work in progress, irrespective of how old we are, how long we've been a Christian, or who we are. And remember, there is no retirement or redundancy in the kingdom of God. When Dave was standing here this time last week, He spoke a little bit about a word that was given during an open to God meeting on one Sunday evening. And it's a word that stuck with me. Maybe it stuck with you as well, but let me remind you. The word was, what are you expecting God to do? So this morning, what are you expecting God to do? bearing in mind that he's not finished with you. So what might he have in store for you? At this moment, you might be feeling your age. You might have achy joints. You might be feeling weak, fearful, or discouraged. You might be feeling anything but expectant, hopeful, or strong, but you're here in the presence of God. And our God is a great, big, loving God, and with him absolutely anything is possible. As we read through our Bibles, we find over and over again that God achieved great things through weak people. In fact, God has always chosen to achieve great things through weak people. Why is that? Because that's all he's got. He has nobody else to work with. There are no strong people. None of us are spiritual superheroes. We are all weak. We all know what it is to fail, to fall down, to mess up, to have doubts, and to make mistakes that we regret. This morning we heard from two chronicles that reading that David read first. We heard about King Jehoshaphat of Judah. As a king, he was immensely rich, immeasurably powerful. He commanded a large army and he wielded huge authority. That was in chapter 20. Now, if he'd flicked back a few chapters, we would have seen how Jehoshaphat 
had actually increased his military strength by building forts across Judah. And in each fort, he had packed it with well-trained fighting men. He was ready. He had every reason to feel strong, to feel safe and secure. But when he learned that the armies of three enemy kings had united against him and that their vast combined army was approaching to attack him, he realized just how weak and vulnerable he was. Having become aware of his weakness and vulnerability, King Jehoshaphat faced a choice. Did he continue to trust in all that he had prepared, in his military strength, in his authority? Or did he realize that actually he wasn't strong enough? That actually he was weak? Jehoshaphat did the right thing. Firstly, he reminded himself of all the ways that God had revealed his love, his strength and his faithfulness in the past. Many times in the history of Israel and Judah, God had provided blessing and protection. Secondly, having looked back, Jehoshaphat returned to his present predicament. And he brought the whole matter before the Lord in prayer and in fasting. He showed God that he was both serious and sincere. He was honest and humble before God and indeed before the people of Judah. He admitted his weakness his inadequacy. He laid aside his pride and his reputation. This is how the New King James Version records Jehoshaphat's prayer. Lord, we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. I think we're all familiar with much of that, aren't we? We feel that we have no power when some problem is coming against us and we don't understand how we can possibly sort this out. We don't know what to do. Can you feel Jehoshaphat's anguish? Can you identify with those words he said? And then God stepped in and he spoke, interestingly, not to Jehoshaphat himself. God gave his word to Jehaziel, son of Zechariah. In 2 Chronicles verses 14 and 15, we read that the spirit of the Lord came on Jehaziel, son of Zechariah. He said, Listen, King Jehoshaphat and all Judah, this is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. God spoke, and light came, and that light shattered the darkness of despair. In the remainder of 2 Chronicles chapter 20, we read of how God worked that great victory on behalf of his people Judah. Maybe that's something you might want to go home and read later today. But there's a lesson for us here. When we pray, 
like Jehoshaphat did, when he laid it all before the Lord. We need to be open to the possibility that God will send someone to us with his response. He may not give his response directly to us. Equally, God may touch us through the Holy Spirit and give us the word to take to someone in need. Sometimes we underestimate prayer. Sometimes we think it's the last resort or the only thing I can do because I can't do anything else. But don't underestimate prayer. Be expectant. God can do amazing things when we pray. It is through prayer that boulders are moved and the ground is broken up. It is through prayer that foundations are laid. Darkness is pushed back. Prayer is essential. Your prayers are essential. Does the idea of being used by God to be the answer to someone's prayer thrill you? Does it make you expectant? We also need to follow Jehoshaphat's example of sharing our need for help. Our need because we are weak. Our inability to know what to do. As a community of faith, we need to know and trust one another enough to share our weaknesses in depth, with openness, with honesty and humility. So as we stand in the beginning of this new week, which will undoubtedly bring us times when we feel weak, confused or vulnerable, how are we going to pray? Let's determine to pray with openness, honesty and humility. And pray with an expectancy that God will move and speak. Recall how he has done it in the past. Ask him to do it again. Ask the Holy Spirit to move within you. And as he does, he'll give you a special word. And pray remembering that God can do more than we can possibly ask or imagine. Maybe he will give you a special word to say to a friend or a family member colleague, the person at the supermarket checkout, the person beside you as you sit in the doctor's waiting room, maybe even the doctor. Maybe God's going to use you to bring his light to shine where it's been dark for too long. Maybe more of your potential will be released because God's not finished with you. Let's pray together. O oh Lord, your word declares that we are your workmanship, created in Jesus to do good works which you have prepared in advance for us to do. Thank you, Lord, that you have not finished with us. You have not given up on us. You are the master potter. We are your clay. We ask you now to refine and remould us so that as we put our hand in yours, your kingdom on earth will expand and be strengthened. Help us, Holy Spirit, to delight in weakness, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties, for when we are weak, then we are strong. Amen.